Look at his paws. They're giant. And he should be giant. He's so underweight. I mean, the biggest thing on this guy are those sad eyes. And his story's still unfolding, but just wait until you hear this. It's wild. And here's a little preview of him standing up to just show how bad he is. Because he just like curls up in the corner and makes himself so small, which based off what I'm hearing about his story makes sense. Let's go in and sit down with this real life Scooby-Doo. Oh, you're so big. I, I just go right here with you. Wow, you are a big dog. In a good way. I'm just going to go really slow. There's already interest, which is good. This dog is rightfully... It's just, oh, you smell the treats in my pocket already. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Okay, let's let's start with a treat. I bet we can get somewhere pretty quickly here with this. Hi, especially because you look so hungry. Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? I mean, I don't think you can see it yet. I'm going to show you here in a second something that is just wild. That is really good. That that she's or she or he he I think from the collar. We'll find out here in a minute. But yeah, he look at the look at him licking his lips. Okay, I will tell you this. His name is Scooby. I mean, could you have a better name for this dog? I don't think so. We'll see in a minute here if he knows his name. You want some snacks? <laughs> some Scooby snacks? Get it? Yeah, it's funny. Hi. I'm trying to keep the humor light here because his situation is really sad. You can just see by looking at him. Alexis is outside, so we'll call her in a minute and, and get the full story. Hi, I'm going to go ahead and sit down. He didn't, he didn't seem to mind that. Hi, can I just sit right here? I'm going to go slow. He seems pretty friendly right out of the gate. A lot of times, even if the dog's friendly, and I know it's hard. It's, trust me. Let's, here, let's try to hand him a treat. Okay. <laughs> he's got, wow, he's got a big jumper. I know it's hard when you're watching to go, why don't you just pet that dog? Hey, you think that's hard? Try being here and not petting that dog. It's really hard. The reason I don't pet that dog right away, even though I want to so badly, even if the dog wants it so badly, I want the dog's curiosity to be high. I want them to come to me. I don't want them to feel the pressure of me wanting to pet them. Like, that's my goal. <laughs> I want to pet them. That's not their goal. That's not what they want right out of the gate. Okay, let's try an open hand. See what he does. You see, when I came at him with the treat, he was less interested. When I started to pull away with the treat, then he was interested. So that's why I, I don't make eye contact right away. I don't pet right away. But he is, you can tell he is so hungry. Since we know his name, let's see if let's see if he knows it. Scooby. Scooby. Scooby, do you want a treat? Yeah, he knows. You see the little moves? Look. He he's looking at me. Let me see. I'm gonna give him a treat over here to see if I can get him to look at you. Look at this face. Look at those ears. Oh my goodness. How do you not fall in love with ears like that? Were you trying to get adopted, buddy? What's going on here? How are, you, how are you just packing all that cuteness into that giant frame? It's not lost on me that he's so big, but so small. Like, he's making himself small. You can tell he's hungry. And so his frame is big, but his body is small. And that hurts. And it's always, it's always this moment right here. I, I call it the two minute drop. I don't know where it actually lands, but when I sit with a dog that's been through it and you can just tell and you just know and you feel it in your heart and they express it to you, that you just want to be so angry at the wolf. But you shake it off. You have to shake it off because that's not fair to him. I came in here to show him love and let him know it's going to be okay. But I definitely, I definitely get the chills. Look at that. Oh. You feel it. You can't not feel it when you're in the presence of a giant dog like this that has physically has signs that he's been through it. 
this this is good when I'm going to keep talking. This is good when he investigates me. And oh, look at that guy. <laughs> look at look at him. Look at that. He looks so grand, doesn't he? He looks like almost like a gargoyle statue that you'd see like in front of a really rich person's house <laughs> or a castle. Um, hi. You looking for more more of the T word? I don't have any more, bud. But you can check me out. It's really good when he investigates me. Yeah, he, he thinks there's more in my pocket. Oh, there might be another one in my pocket. I'm going to check. I don't want to, I want to keep it in case I need it here in a minute. I come in equipped into a kennel with a couple different things. One is a lead, especially when a big dog, because if that dog gets overexcited or scared and I need to use the lead uh, to help control the situation, I have it. Sometimes people say, well, the dog knows they can sense that lead and they're scared of that lead or that rope. I haven't ever really seen that or witnessed, and I really pay attention to dogs' body languages, and I, I don't really see that much. Uh, if I, if and when I can, I'll take it off just, just in case, but I've, ne I've never really witnessed that. And another thing I do when I sit here and I talk um, to all of you, I do it for a reason. Not to hear myself talk, that's certainly not the case, but I do it so that the dog realizes they're not the center of attention and because it takes a lot of pressure off of them when they realize they're not the focus. And I think that's really good in that initial relationship. Uh, they're just part of the conversation, which is good. It's why one of my favorite things at shelters are reading programs. You can go volunteer at a shelter to read to a dog. They'll have, uh, like, for example, Animal Friends of the Valleys, the shelter that I'm at right now, they'll have a reading program where every Wednesday, I don't know if it's every Wednesday, check check with them and, and or your local shelter. But I think at like 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., little kiddos and other people that want to come in and read, they'll bring a book and they'll read to the dogs outside of the kennels. And I think that's, I think that's really great. It means a lot, I think, to them and to the dog. Is he 100% Great Dane or some mix of something? I can't tell. My Great Dane experts, what do you think? Do you think he's 100% Great Dane? And because he's so emaciated, he just looks like he might be partially another breed he almost looks kind of greyhound but i think it's just because he's so malnourished like he shouldn't be able to see the curves of a great dane's body like that let's give him a little affection and then i'm going to call alexis and we're going to find out his story but i think he is really looking for some pets after we find out the story we'll give him some positive affirmations and just let him know what a good boy he is but yeah let's see I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull that other treat stick out that he's been sniffing at. Okay. Yeah, and you know what? Because he is so skinny, I'm going to see this. Our, the sponsor of this video is Sunday's Dog Food, which is awesome. So I'm going to, let me call Kelly real quick. Hey, just real quick. You saw the dog Scooby that I'm sitting with, right? Yeah. Yo, so he is so emaciated. This might be a really good opportunity for Sunday's Dog Food, our sponsor. Call and ask them if uh, okay. if they could feed a dog for a year, but don't tell them uh, don't tell them the kind of dog. Yeah. Just get them to agree okay. first. I mean, how underweight do you think he is? I don't know. I'm gonna try to get him. To, I, mean, I won't tell him that. I, I'm gonna get him to walk around here in a minute, and I think I just show okay. people what I'm seeing. Yeah. But yeah, just call and see if you can get him to agree first. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Let's. Uh, he's being so good for these treats too. Here you go. That's a good boy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my paw treat trick where I just put my hand on the paw there. So that's good. That's a good sign. The dog's paws are really sensitive. And so if I distract with a treat and I touch their paw and there's not flinching there, that's, all, that's a good thing. He's got really pretty coloring and he's got like these white paws and his kind of, his coloring is kind of muted. Oh, you got a little chompy chomp there. Um, that's, all, that's all you have, bud. Yeah, but he seems okay with affection. Let's try it. Oh, hi. Hi. I am so sorry. Oh. We got we to gotta find out his story. Let me, I'm going to call Alexis and get his story, see what's going on here. Alexis has access to the internal system at the shelter, so she can look up this information. Hey, are you in a spot where you can jump on the computer and we can we can figure out uh, Scooby's story. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, pulling it up right now. Okay. Awesome. I don't know if you've seen this guy, but 
I'm sitting closer to him and he doesn't seem to mind me looking at him, but he is so emaciated and he's just like scarfing the treats down. He's, he's absolutely hungry. Yeah, definitely. Um, How old is he? History. Oh, he does? Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, firstly, I'll let you know, uh, he is uh, five and a half years old. Five and a half. I could, I could see that. I'd say he's middle aged. You know, Great Danes guys, they don't, they don't have the longest life expectancy, like a lot of big dogs. Um, but he's, he's middle-aged. He's so handsome. Okay, yeah, boy. Do we have a... So we have a microchip on him? He does have a microchip, but obviously he's here, so... Right. So he's owner known right now? No, he is actually adoption available. Oh, he is. He is. Okay. What what happens at the shelter, guys, is when they're owner known... And, and this, is, this varies by shelter, but when they're owner known, the hold is typically longer because they want to try to reunite the dog with the owner, figure out a solution, provide aid, whatever they can do to help reunite that family. If the owner's unknown, it's five days because you just can't hold a dog that long. You want to get them adopted, but he's owner known and available for adoption. So what, Alexis, that means the owner said we don't want him? So he's got, uh, like I said, a lot of history on him okay scooby actually we have notes dating back to 2022 back to 2022 yes in 2022 he was left in night drop mark doesn't own or turn in oh, do, do we even have night drop big enough for this guy <laughs> yeah they i mean uh he, he was just there overnight but uh i mean I'll sh- yeah i'll show you guys uh, i'll put it on the screen here some video of night drop I guess the kennels are pretty big, but I just never thought could could they? I mean, they're definitely not built to fit Great Danes. Yeah, it's uh, still a little bit of a tight squeeze for him. Oh wait, wait, hold on. Let, yeah, I'm, it, I'm jumping around a little bit here, but let me interrupt because there's a lot of information. Or are there notes why he was brought in the first time? Yes, it's a little bit hard to get the details as to exactly what it was. Okay. But basically, they were apparently very, according to the shelter, very fixable and manageable situations that you know the the owner could handle once they talked about it more the owner then decided you know what you guys are right and then came to pick the dog back up it's almost like he's sad hearing this story he like (laughs) so sad okay um i'm glad they came to pick him up but what they they changed their mind again i guess the owner is uh moving um to mexico so they brought him back in um, but I know that there have been rumors floating around. I'm not sure if you want to go over that. Yeah. Okay. So this is what they were talking about when they said there's a, there was like a whole stack of paperwork or something. I didn't, I didn't hear the whole story, but the part that I did hear, and I don't know if I wanted to believe this, by the way, these are just rumors. This is just hearsay. At a certain point, he was brought in because the mom threatened the kids that if they didn't feed him, that they, she was going to come just turn him into the shelter. And they didn't, and so she brought him to the shelter. Now, what I don't know is, was that like a punishment to the kids because they weren't feeding the dog? Or was she saying, hey, I'm trying to keep this dog's best interest in mind. You're in charge of taking care of the dog, and you're not feeding him, or he's not gaining weight or something, so we got to take him in to get help? I don't know. Does it say? Does it have anything about that in the notes? No. Um, I, I'm giving you as much as I, I can. Okay. Uh, that they have written down in the notes. The only other thing that's in here is that apparently, you know, owner said dog was sick with stomach problems, which is why he is so skinny and still could be sick. And that they did uh, bring Scooby to the vet uh, multiple times and kept them up to date on everything. Okay. Oh, you know what? Hold on. She's right outside. Let me ask her a question. Hold on. Hi. Okay. So I got a little more of the story. Everything that Alexa said was correct in the system. Hi, I should have brought a treat with me, huh? Sorry. I'll get some here in just a second. I guess there's like a whole stack of medical records at the vet. And so I think what we can do is we can call the vet and try to get those medical records. I don't know if we'll get them. They may not be willing to release them. We don't know. Apparently, there might have been some uh, budget issues on having enough money to feed a Great Dane. Because look, it's a Great Dane. And... Great Danes are, they're not the dog where you can just pour out a a bag of kibble and hope that it all works out, right? They they need a lot of care and work and balance. Great Danes, because they grow so fast and they're such, they're on such an accelerated rate of life (laughs) that they just have tendencies 
to not have more medical issues. Well, they can have more medical issues, but need more focus in their diet. One, it breaks my heart that someone either didn't have the resources or didn't have the desire to figure this out and help this dog that is clearly in need. But with all the empathy in the world and no judgment, I am glad he's here now because now we can figure out a way to help him. And that's the good thing. He, he is safe and he's in a place where there are a lot of people that, that want to see him succeed and we can figure that out. It's going to be focus on diet, right? That would be the first step. We got You got to get him to a vet if you adopt him. Just make sure he's okay. See what the vet recommends as far as a path to health. I don't know, but I do know this. We're here for him. So let's show him some love and affection. Let's give him some positive affirmations. This is the part of the videos, if you've ever watched, where I just take a moment and I just tell him how important he is and how loved he is. Let's see. And I try to do this scoop where I get him in my lap. I don't know if I can get this guy in my lap, but oh, you see that? Do you see him? Oh, hi, buddy. Oh, he must have seen my videos. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hi. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. You're a good boy, Scooby. Oh, Scooby, I am sorry, buddy. Whatever you've been through, you do not deserve this. And I'll tell you this. I know you're probably hungry and you feel unbalanced. You know that feeling? You know that feeling when you just don't feel good? You're not eating right and you just feel like crud? He, that's probably what he feels like right now. Hi. We are going to figure out a way to unlock that and get the food in your belly and get the calories on you and help you feel strong and healthy. Yes. Now, I've never worked with or fed a Great Dane before, and I know there's a lot that goes into it. And if you're a Great Dane owner or previous owner, please leave comments down below. Tell me, tell me what you think, because they're such a special, unique breed. Hi, you're a good boy. Listen, whatever you've been through, I'm sorry. It seems like you had some people that were trying. Oh, is that a sensitive spot? I'm sorry. That cared, that loved you, but just couldn't figure it out. And we're going to figure it out from here. Whatever fail happened to you, we're not going to let that happen now. Look, this little bump on his head should not be here. Like, you should not be able to see that like that. And that's just from lack of nutrition. And he's going to need a lot of healthy, delicious food. Hi, we're gonna fill your belly and we're gonna fill your heart. Hi, he also hasn't had a bath in a long time. Like he's so grimy when you touch him. Hi, but look, it's almost like he's smiling because he, that love feels so good. Hi, bud, hi. You will come up here in my lab? Come here, come here. Okay, we'll do like a an, an attempted scoop. Hi, there you go, there you go. Hi, buddy. Hi, let's get you some love, man. Let's get you some love and let's get you some food. Hey, Kelly, can you bring me some more treats? I want to just load him up with some treats here. He loves these things. And I love him. Hi, you're a good boy. You're a good boy. You deserve some treats. Hi. Here, come on. Come on in here. Come on in here. Come meet this guy. Come here. Come here. Look here. Sit down right here. Can you squeeze in there? Get, just give him that whole treat stick. Hey, buddy. Oh. What's funny is that's an entire treat stick, and that's about like size wise, that would just be like a normal, you know, treat about that size for, for a normal dog. I mean, it's gone already. Oh. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> the whole thing in his mouth in one bite. <laughs> He's so cute, huh? But doesn't he look like there's some other kind of breed in him? Yeah, but just his pure size. I think it's just because he's so skinny, it makes him look like another breed almost. Well, yeah. I feel like Great Danes typically have, like, more droopy jowls. Yeah. he doesn't really have. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's pretty amazing. Hi. But what what I'll have to show everyone, or you can kind of see it now. I'll try to get him to walk in a minute. But you can see his spine. Like, that's so hard to see. I don't when have any he treats sits up, you can kind of see the indentation in his chest. Yeah. What an amazing dog, like, you know, just energy level. And like, you can tell he just is a dog that wants to please and be loyal. But look how he like sits like a little puppy on my lap. Yeah. He's so cute. Hi, bud. Hi. He has such a long snout. Yeah. 
Like, if you get his side profile. Yeah. Yeah, he's, but he's so loving, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Um, so one of the things that they told me, too, and, and again, we don't have this in notes. This is hearsay. But that the family that had him mm-hmm. was an English-speaking family. When he came in this last time, it was a Spanish-speaking family. Yeah, so he's probably been tossed around. I think I think what happened is maybe someone tried to rehome. I, I think someone tried to rehome him. I think somebody. I think he's a very loved dog, um, and he has been a very loved dog. I just think they were struggling financially or uh, with how to help. He's like, you don't have treats. Yeah, yeah. Why would I? Why would I come over to you? <laughs> Has he gotten up? Have you been able to see his whole body? No. Uh, I'm going to try to walk him and get him up here in a minute. I've just been taking it really slow with him, but he's so loving now. I just don't want him to re- regress because he's definitely, you know, scared and taken back. He probably, you know, if you eat too much fast food too many times in a row and you just feel like crud, I bet, I bet that's what he feels like right now. One of the reasons he's probably just so tired and like low energy. Yeah. Can you see the indentation on his chest? Yeah, yeah, like that shouldn't be so indented right there. I'm going to try to get his vet records. I don't know if it'll be possible, but I'm going to see what we can, what magic we can work. Well, and his sheet says he's between 50 and 75 pounds. Oh. That is wild. I mean, he should be at least twice that. Yeah, guys, if you meet a Great Dane under 100 pounds, there's something wrong with that Great Dane. I, get, I mean, I'm no Great Dane expert. I'm, I'm going to be interested to see what everyone's saying in the comments and the feedback we get. I'm not a Great Dane expert because they are such a breed. You have to be knowledgeable and you have to really, you really have to like study uh, or experience this breed firsthand to know all of the ins and outs. I, I would imagine he's fine around kids, you know, other dogs. I'm just guessing, obviously, yeah. you, you know, if you have other dogs come in, do a meet and greet. Uh, little kids could always be a problem because they just knock them over. We have a big dog. We know how that works. We, we have to separate him often because he's just, well, ours is well, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. But with Kobe, we are always working to balance his diet, our dog, because he has heart issues. He's on medication. So between his kidneys and his heart, we're always working on his diet. Like it's yeah. a constant, I want to say battle, but let's say challenge. And I'll bet this guy is the same. But if you can get him balanced, it'll, I think it's a lot of hard work initially. And then once you get him balanced, it's going to be a lot easier. Oh, Sunday's calling me. Sure. All right. Okay, give me one second. Okay. Now, here's the hardest thing. It's not going to be easy to get a, him adopted. Not anyone can just take a Great Dane. But if you can take a chance on a guy like this, you can tell he's such a loving guy that you would just have the most amazing dog and the most amazing bond. Let me get him to walk around. Here, let's see. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay. Okay, good boy. Oh, no. Yeah, that hurts. Oh, I'm so sorry, bub. I'm so sorry. But, oh my goodness, I didn't realize how tall you are, too. He's so tall. Um, Here, stand next to him. Yeah, look how big he is next to you. That is wild. Like, he is so big. Excuse me, excuse me. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. When you see him next to you, you can see just how big he is. He would definitely be taller than me on his height, for sure. Like, <laughs> He's almost taller than you just standing that way. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That is wild. Even as big as he is, he still looks so skinny. And he should weigh more than me, but currently I weigh more than him. So we... No comment. <laughs> well, the good news is that I talked to Sundays and they said they're in. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Did you, did you tell them what kind of dog? I didn't. They didn't ask. So <laughs> we're just going with it. And thank you, Sundays. You're the best. <laughs> Sun, Sunday's dog food is the best. I mean, Kobe can vouch for that. Like, Kobe, when we pull the Sunday's dog food out of the cupboard for him, he just loses it. Like, he, you know, he, he almost starts running into things. And um, it's pretty wild how much he loves that stuff. But it's great, too, because it's such healthy food for him. Yeah. This guy's going to need it for sure. <laughs> I'm telling you, Sundays, they either really love us or or they're sitting in their office going, oh, they got us again. We asked them to give us a better discount than you can get anywhere else. And they are willing to give you guys 50% off for anyone who tries it. So I'll link it right here or just go to rockykanaka.com slash Sundays. The fact that they're going to feed him for a year and they help rescue dogs 
so much and that the food is so fantastic is just a testament to the kind of companies that we really like working with. So let's support the companies that are supporting dogs and us. Scooby. Yeah. Let's support the companies that are supporting dogs like Scooby. Okay. So I took a picture of him on a standing outside. Yeah. And you know how on your iPhone, if you scroll up, it like looks up what the thinks the breed is. Okay. What's it say? A black mouth cur okay. and a Rhodesian Ridgeback, which I feel like maybe it just saw the Rhodesian Ridgeback because of his spine. Yeah. Yeah. It's throwing, it's throw it's even throwing uh, iPhone off. But that looks like him. The black mouth. Yeah, the like cur. Yeah, so it does. Maybe, like, maybe Dane and cur. Because uh, he, the, his snout looks like that. Yeah. Because the, the Great Danes have much more jowly, droopy. That's things. true. That's true. So. I bet I bet a black mouth cur for sure. I don't know. I throw it out to you guys. What do you guys think? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. You know, what do you think? Do you think this is something where the family just didn't care, neglected him, brought him to the shelter, they could care less? Or do you think this is something where they tried really hard and they just couldn't figure it out or they didn't have the money and they brought him here thinking this is the best chance he had at making it? I don't know. There's a lot of, lot of uh, kind of hearsay and um, things I'm hearing through the grapevine that I don't like, but I don't know what you think. I want to see if Scooby knows any, uh, any tricks. Can you sit? Scooby, can you sit? Scooby, sit. 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 Oh, yeah, good boy. Scooby knows some tricks. Good boy, Scooby. Can you lay down? Can you lay down? No, okay. We're not, hey, we're not, we're not there yet. It's hard to get him to lay down, too, because the space is so small. It's not, it's not a small space. He makes it seem small. Can you sit? Can you sit, Scooby? Sit. 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 Okay, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, there's a little bit of fear there. I don't want that. I just want him to enjoy some treats, you know? With him being as hungry, too, like, his food bowl is empty. Sorry, buddy. Here, I'll throw a treat in there so that wasn't completely a jerk move. There you go. Um, his bowl is empty. And I know a couple times I've worked with dogs like this that are emaciated. And the comments say things like, um, why don't you feed him? Like, you see he's hungry. Get food in there. So he's absolutely getting meals. In fact, he's getting meals on a regular basis, small meals. With an emaciated dog, you can't just feed them. Oh, you found my little treat that was hiding over there. You good. Um, with an emaciated dog, you can't just feed them just as much food as they want because it'll cause a lot of problems, especially with Great Danes. They can have issues with bloating. Any dog can, but, but big breed dogs for sure. Um, he does always have access to water. Sometimes when I come in here, I remove the water for a little bit, just in case it's a scared dog, they'll jump in it, they'll panic, that'll create more panic, but he doesn't seem to have that issue. I think I'm about to get slobbered on big time. Oh no. <laughs> oh, here it comes. This is gonna be, this is gonna be slobber time. Here it comes. <laughs> okay, I, that's good. I thought I was. I thought he was gonna come right to me. Oh, he's just gonna get the camera. Come here, buddy. Over here. He's clearly in need of love and a family that will show him love. And he's heartbroken and he's hungry. And here's how you can help. He's gonna need a home. He's gonna need a family. And you can adopt him. And if you can't adopt him, one way you can make a big difference is by sharing this. Because you never know when your share is going to be the share that leads to his forever home. And I see it again and again where someone comes in and goes, I saw your video. I didn't know. I didn't, you know, I hadn't seen it before. Or recently, I saw it on trending. We were number two on trending with Bobby, which is great because it helps get her awareness. I like, I don't care that we're trending as like a YouTube creator. What's really neat is that she got attention. The person that adopted Bobby hadn't ever seen our channel before, but she saw it on trending and that's what led her to Bobby. And it's because all of you were liking and sharing and commenting. And it just means the world to me that I'm, I'm with a group of such amazing dog rescue lovers like you. So make sure you're subscribed. If you wanna be a bigger part of this, you can become a member. It's a really cool community and you get special perks like first release videos. You're the first to know about dogs when they get adopted, if the return, you know, it, all the information. Um, so I'd love to have you become a member. You just hit that join button. 
But above all else, just send love to Scooby. Hi, buddy. Hi, Scooby. <laughs> like, your face is so big. <laughs> um, because Scooby needs the love. I will put all of his information down below along with a link so you can go get Sundays for Dogs for your dog. Let's support our sponsor because they, <laughs> they're going to need it because they're feeding this Great Dane for an entire year. <laughs> Scooby, you're going to get all kinds of Scooby snacks, buddy. <laughs> Scooby, you're going to get all kinds of food. You're going to have a full belly and a full heart. He's available for adoption. I'll put a link with all his information down below in the description. But you can come to Animal Friends of the Valleys right now and adopt him. He could be in your home today. Oh, by the way, let me just mention here, because you may not have heard about this, but I actually launched coffee. It's called Flips Coffee. And it coincides with my dog rehabilitation rescue center on my farm called Flips Farm. And it's after my late dog, Flip, my boxer, my guy who went through rescue with me and helped me rehabilitate dogs. He quite literally saved my life when I was having a stroke. And he let me know I was having it before I knew. Like the most amazing dog. And now his spirit lives on and we're gonna continue to rehabilitate dogs. So when you purchase Flip Coffee, it goes to help in those efforts. And let me tell you about the coffee. It's the best coffee in the world. Obviously, I'm a little biased, but we spent years and years and years growing coffee on our farm, testing coffee, working on the roasting profiles to get this coffee just right for you. And don't get me wrong, there are a lot of great coffees out there. This one's the best. But if all's the same, why not drink your coffee with some purpose, right? That's what Flip Coffee is. I will attach it right here to the video so you can get it or just go to flipcoffee.com and order some coffee and let me know what you think.